Um, I think I'm just gonna make money through entrepreneurship, to be honest. My software company's already worth quite a bit. I'm thinking about raising the valuation to like 50 or 100 mil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I do have uh, FTC deliberations. That's the only thing I really have to worry about. I'm appeal appealing the FTC. If I lose the appeal, I I'm still gonna force indemnification, which is kind of what today's announcements were about, it looks like. It sucks when you end up fighting your own company. It's like really sad. I want to invest, I don't want to look at penny stock. I would just work. I mean, when you're dealing with low amounts of money, it's best to just get a job and get skills. Like, don't worry about anything else. Yeah, marketing crypto is, I think, like really toxic. Like, you don't want to do that for, at least in the US, with securities. Uh... Yeah, and I think you're right about that as well, but there's, you just never be too careful. I think, you know, speak softly and carry a big stick. I'm going to start focusing a little bit more on crypto soon. Um, you'll see what I mean shortly. It just feels like there isn't a smart way. Like, promo promotion should take care of itself, right? Like, Patrick says, uh, fortune favors the bold, exactly. Like, you don't want to... Like, I never promoted any of the stocks I was the CEO of because the results will speak for themselves. It's either useful, the company does well, and the stock goes up, or it doesn't. You know, in crypto, it's sort of like, well, if people like the technology and they use it, the token will take care of itself. If the technology sucks and doesn't do, do anything, then that'll be that. I mean, if you t look at meme coins, yeah, I don't care if crypto is different, because if you look at meme coins, they don't have any value. There's no purpose of, of promoting them. That's just a scam. You know, it's just pump and dump, right? Your hot potato here, hopefully this will go up before you, before I dump it. You know, that's that's not a business. That's a that's a sham. I don't want to be involved in anything like that. But if you look at technologies that can be useful, like zero knowledge proofs or distributed computing, there's a lot to be had there. Identity, distributed identity, trustless identity. There's a lot of, you know, things that you can, you know, you can sort of make useful out of crypto. But uh, BRC20, somebody's mentioning. But, you know, you, you, how do you beat people who are crypto native to the punch? You become crypto native and now you're, you know, just trying to sort of fight, um, you know, for relevance. I don't know about that. I think, like, if you look at the... There, there are a million projects, so to speak, but I think the same applies in every other field. There's a million drugs companies, there's a million software companies. You know, how does one become Microsoft or Oracle and not one of the ones to lower down this list? You make the best product, right? I mean, just promoting does not make you a great product, right? Um, there's a bit of a virtuous cycle where you, you, you promote, then you get more resources, then you use the resources wisely, and it all is like a happy cycle, but... Yeah, I don't think, uh, you know, just just hawking some kind of token without working on the, the software behind it is a good idea. But the question is, you know, how do you, what, what do you add? Like you said, I mean, there's there's a lot of competition for for software in the blockchain space. There's arguably too much capital in blockchain, right, relative to how much opportunity it actually provides. Um, one of the things that I always thought was really important was uh, stock-based tokens or something like that. You know, the SEC doesn't love that idea, but I think like there should be a Tesla coin and a, you know, stuff like that. You know, so you could trade Tesla 24-7 using crypto or some other asset-backed token. Uh, I think that'd be a really nice tool. Yeah, I mean, we can't, the problem is I can't do any percentage software because it feels like with a handful of developers like we're, we're we're there to use crypto but I don't know that we're there to innovate in crypto it's very hard to actually do something new in crypto everyone's sort of doing derivatives of each other land back crypto I don't think would work as well yeah Henry you're funny yeah I like IPFS I agree Jamie IPFS and other storage coins or tokens are a really good idea Filecoin and Store J, like that's that's a really smart thing. But like, where do you, you know, can you add add value there? I don't think so. 
you know, you can just use Filecoin, you know, that's not going to benefit you other than ben using the technology, right? Drug companies would never price a medicine at a price that didn't give them the maximum revenue. And there's a little chart we learned in business school. We paid big money to get these business school lessons. Check this out. I'm gonna give you one of the secrets. This is like revealing Scientology secrets right now. We got, hope you guys are paying attention. Somebody's gonna record this, I bet. They're gonna yell at me. You've got price, okay, times, this dot is a times, they also teach that. That's been passed down from generation to generation of Rockefellers and, and other robber barons. Times volume, okay, is revenue. Now, if you make this too high, this will go down. And then this will go down. So you were trying to optimize revenue. So you gotta think about just how much price and the elasticity, like elastic, of supply and demand. It kind of looks like this. This is a supply curve. As the price goes down, it goes up. Demand goes down. This is demand, this is price. And it's the opposite. When price is low, demand is very high. I guess this is demand at low well, maybe this is supply. Or maybe this is units. Low price, very, this is a supply curve, this is a demand curve. They meet at equilibrium. You price too high, demand is very low. You price too low, demand becomes very high. That's it. AI research artificial intelligence for keeping track of Chinese people. AI for a better tomorrow, my ass. Smart city. These guys are literally the, uh, the matrix. Like, this is one of the scariest companies in the world. Check this out. Oh, China's sense time unveils GPT challenger. Interesting. They, it looks like they scrubbed all of their a negative press. These guys are like literally the dystopian nightmare face recognition. You guys see this? Crazy, huh? It knows. It knows. Two screens, I think, is, is good. You don't want more than two screens. Let's see how fast Gupta uh, responds on this version. Oh, Dr. Gupta, I have a terrible headache. The issue is sometimes it'll take forever to respond. So here, one, two, okay, two seconds, pretty good. Can you tell me more about your headache? When did it start? How long have you been having it? Have you tried any OTC relievers? Um, it started a few days ago. Do we use MUI? I guess we do. Uh, days ago, it happens a few times a month, every month. It was really painful. I have to lie down. And turn off the lights. I've tried Tylenol, but it doesn't help. Right, one Mississippi, two Mississippi, three Mississippi, four Mississippi, five Mississippi, six Mississippi, seven Mississippi, eight Mississippi. All right, not bad. All right, figured out I have migraines, so that's good. Noise is a trigger for headaches. Evidence-based review for migraines, medication overuse for headache, migraine prevalence. These are good papers. Central sensitization theory for migraine. Cool. Well, thanks for the articles, Dr. Gupta. All right, so this is a bit faster. The other, the, the high quality, slower is like, could be like two minutes before he responds, but here it's like real quick. 
this back and forth. Line 99. Messages. I think we're gonna. Oh, it says message limits will reset on the first day of each month, so that's good. And I think we're gonna bump it up to six from five. It's a little more generous. Almost a hundred thousand people have tried Dr. Gupta. Yeah, uh, we can look at the PayPal quarter. I didn't look at the quarter, so I don't know what happened. Sorry. It looked good, but you know, if company is bad. Earnings results, then it is what it is. It's part of the perils of investing in tech. I don't know why anybody's so scared of this and looks good. What's the problem? Why did PayPal go down? I just buy more, right? Mark Cuban's thing is just fake. I mean, it's just lies. Mark Cuban's definitely the luckiest guy alive, yeah. Well, luckiest rich guy. I mean, wealth isn't everything, of course. Yeah, I'll fight Cuban. Fuck yeah. Fuck that bitch. <laughs>